making him wait <laughs> will that get your commitment if you want to know keep watching and i will see you right after this Welcome back. My name is Chengi. I am your dating and relationship expert, founder of the Black Swan Relationship Academy. Welcome. We are here, my coaches and I, to teach you ladies how to present as a high value, high status, and high worth woman that high quality men find completely irresistible. Of course, we're here to transform you into black swans. Okie dokie. So today we are talking about making him wait for commitment is it true is it false that the longer he waits the more likely you are to be committed to or the more he will commit like there's greater certainty in him committing well i would love to give you a clear-cut answer and say absolutely true or absolutely false but what we are gonna do is explore why this is not such a straightforward answer now this is not a straightforward answer simply because human beings are incredibly complex and now we're waiting now some of you are thinking wait for what it may be waiting for physical intimacy is usually the golden ticket but the world has so changed and physical intimacy has become cheaper than anything in the world and men have the ability to access it left right and center so it's no longer the commodity that it used to be in our parents generation or, or in times gone by now it really is about compatibility and people and humans are now mating not for survival like they used to we're now mating for for personal fulfillment, we're now choosing partners who will grant us personal fulfillment, who would support us with our dreams, who will accept us for who we are. In the 21st century, we are choosing for more, looking for more than we've ever done in past, in times past. And that changes and shifts dynamics. Now we're looking at things like what are the core needs? We're also looking at, is this man even relationship ready? We're looking at a lot of factors. If a man is not relationship ready, you can make him wait for 110 years. But if he's not relationship ready, if he's not in the place and space in his mind where he's looking for something real and permanent, chances are he's probably going to walk away if he knows that you're not going to be giving it away straight away. Um, or he might, you know, fool around with other women and, you know... <sighs> keep you on a ticking clock maybe as a little bit of a friend because he is not relationship ready this is really important for the black swan to understand that there are men that are relationship ready and men that are not relationship ready and we need to be able to vet them which is why i created the dating playbook the black swan dating playbook because it helps us vet that is why we have the 50 questions every high value woman needs answered we have all of the resources at the black swan relationship academy.com where you can get all the tools that you need to vet and to see if this man is indeed relationship ready but assuming that we are dealing with a man who has flashed and given us enough evidence that he is possibly probably on the market for something real and true how then do we manage ourselves now one of the things you need to understand is that men are highly intuitive they don't know this about themselves but they are highly intuitive and they know the kind of woman that you are there is no way of faking that stuff because energy never lies and men are naturally built with a great pro propensity to be intuitive about the woman that they're dealing with and so what we know is that men marry virtue and not you know, 
the, the opposite but virtue isn't really about virginity or purity as part of the purity culture would put it virtue is really about a woman who has a lot of self-respect now that doesn't necessarily mean that a woman with self-respect does not have a libido and that because she doesn't have a self-respect that she's not going to want to meet some of her own needs now the issue here is you know for those of us who are religious from faith-based communities you know you have a clear-cut you know line drawn as to when you will be physically intimate which makes life very very simple i am sure you know you'll make you know you will pay your price for all all of us pay a price for the beliefs that we hold um especially if they are heartfelt we will lose people who are not on the same page with us but again hopefully this is something that you've accepted for some of us there'll be no physical intimacy until we're married until we engage for some of us there will uh you know we are quite open to it as long as the, our contracts are signed whichever wherever you are on the spectrum you know, making a man realize that you have virtue is really about the conversation you have before anybody becomes uh, horizontal. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to use the right words here so that we can uh, stay on track and not be flagged. Okay. So, you know, we, what shows a man that you're virtuous is the standard that you set for any horizontal action, any physical intimacy. If it's something that happens without a conversation about expectation, then it will feel to him as though you do this with everybody. But it is perfectly okay to outline your contract. You know, even if all I'm doing is meeting a physical need, it's really important that the other person knows why you were there and what your expectations are after the fact. Okay, this is what will signal virtue. Once a man knows that you manage your life and your intimacy consciously, deliberately, then he will know that, of course, other men have not been presented with the same contract and some have signed off on it and some haven't, but it means you're somebody who is conscious you have virtue. Okay, so it's really, really important that this conversation happens. And I've discussed this in the dating plague book under a whole set of modules where we discuss physical intimacy and the do's, the don'ts, the components around it. So you definitely want to go and enroll in that class. There are two types of women. One that positions herself to be a winner using a man's very own nature. We call that woman a black swan or a woman who is convinced that she can scream, shout, and complain and change a man's nature. Now, if you are a black swan, I have decided to help you out. Ladies, I am offering you a free, yes, another free masterclass on the secrets of a man's mind. In this course, we're going to look at the things that men will never tell you, are afraid to tell you, don't even know they need to tell you. Assume you should know. We're gonna look at the man's brain, how he is wired, his heart, his spirit. How does he really think? What is going on in his mind when he meets you, marries you, dates you, courts you? We're gonna look through every aspect and you will be able to understand the secrets of a man's mind. And being a black swan, you will be able to use those secrets to create the love life you crave and deserve. If that sounds good to you, all you have to do is follow any of the link or wherever you see this video and I will see you on the other side. Now, what I want us to, to consider is that um, that is ultimately what triggers a man to think, okay, maybe this is commitment material. I was reading some research today just randomly and they were saying that 58% of men and 56% of women are in relationships, long-term relationships and marriages with the men that they had intimacy with on the first date, which really shows to prove that culture has shifted and we are different now. And in all in those scenarios, obviously we would have to interview and get an idea of the story around it. Sometimes this happens because there's a relationship pre-built and maybe the first date was, you know, after three months, maybe you were talking to him long distance or he's always been a friend in your life and then you go on the first date. Or sometimes it's just pure animalisticness, but often it works best when the woman knows why she's doing it. When the woman is not being intimate with a man because she hopes that by surrendering her body, he will commit to her. Usually the man can feel that energy and he can really truly respect this woman. So 
there's but there's also the 47% who actually never make it. But I don't really believe that it's got to do with the act itself and when it took place, but how we manage that act. So let's go on to point number two. So this is kind of my conversation around why it is false. Making a man wait for the sake of waiting isn't necessarily going to mean he's going to commit because there's so many variables to why a man would commit to a woman. So many variables. And it's a shame when we think it is just that component that will do the magic because in the 21st century, it simply isn't the magic. It was the magic when I was growing up. It was the magic in my mommy's time. Um, but now it's not the magic, like for reasons that I've given. But it's also true that obviously the longer he waits, the more he pursues, the more he gives. And we know that the person who gives creates a stronger attachment. We know that masculine energy attaches better when he is in a giving place and space. The more he is investing of his time, his energy, and his money, the more he is emotionally getting caught up with that place, with that woman that he is investing into. That is more likely to be a deeper connection the longer you wait, because the longer you wait, you're forced to actually get to know each other. You're forced to actually have real conversations. You're forced to get to know each other so much better on a broader level. So of course, there is so much value in waiting but that waiting value doesn't mean that at the end of the journey because whilst you're getting to know each other he might actually get to know that he doesn't like you he might actually get to know that you're not compatible he might actually get to know that mm, you're not for commitment okay so if you were just making him wait to get to lure him into commitment and he realizes that mm, Okay, actually, now that that has been taken off the table, she's not the kind of girl I want to spend the rest of my life with, then of course, it's not true. But what it is, what is true is that you can definitely give it an opportunity. And what is really true and really good is that if you've waited and investigated and done your research and he says yes and you say yes and, and, and you feel that you've done it, hey presto, perfection, two people who know each other, who've built a foundation and friendship and all these other things get to be together and that is obviously the perfect scenario. But let's say, for instance, he decides that you're not the one for him or you decide the other way around. At least you will feel like you kept a piece of yourself for yourself, that you didn't surrender or prematurely um, be intimate with a man when you were not ready because he wanted it. My whole conversation around physical intimacy is really about you, your readiness not just your physical readiness. It's not just what your body is capable of doing or not capable of doing, but are you spiritually ready? Are you emotionally ready? Are you physically ready? Are, is your body, soul, and spirit in alignment? Because whenever there's disconnect, nothing good will come of it and a commitment will be the last of your problems. So always make sure that you are ready and that you are conscious, that you are conscious about the kind of woman that you are, the kind of lover that you are and how you like to, 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 to conduct your love affair when it comes to the physical side. Have pre-decided decisions. Don't meet a guy and make up your mind for that guy, but really have a pre-decision. This is how I'm gonna move. It is honest and authentic to myself. It doesn't have to tick off on anybody's boxes. Your pastor doesn't have to tick on it. Your sisters, your family, no one has to tick off or, or write off your journey. And I want us to think about it as a journey. I want us to take the power away from wherever we have outsourced it, where, we have, where we've put it out, and really start to take responsibility for ourselves, take responsibility for our decision, especially in that area, and be true to ourselves, truly true to ourselves, not just say what people want to hear, but truly true to ourselves. And if we can be authentic and truthful, we know that that is always gonna be a healthier starting point than when we're playing, when we're gaslighting ourselves, right? And playing tricks on ourselves. When we well and know that we have a libido that we have, that is out of control, that is crazy, 
And we say, well, we're not going to do it till we're married. And then we find ourselves waking up next to a guy, feeling guilty, shameful and everything. This is unhealthy. It's an unhealthy relationship with your body. It's an unhealthy relationship with your soul. It's an unhealthy relationship with yourself. The healthiest relationship we can have with ourselves is one that is full of compassion, but most importantly, one that is full of acceptance. Accept yourself and be okay with where you are and do your best with what you have where you are. Do your best. We cannot ask anyone to do more than their best. And if anything, do not judge yourself. The last thing you want to do is judge yourself. We do not have time to judge ourselves or condemn ourselves. We have a whole world ready to do that for us and to us. The last person who wants to do that to you is you. And I know that some of us are watching this and this is really an issue. This is really a point of pain. And so I want to invite you to book a call with myself or any of my coaches. And we'll be more than happy to help you navigate through this mucky and somewhat messy territory. I am here for you. We are here for you. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. In the meantime, do take care of you. Love you lots. Bye-bye now. Well done for coming to the end of this video. What I want to ask you is what have you learned? What is your takeaway? And what are you going to start practicing right away? Those three things are how you are going to get the best out of every class here at the Black Swan Relationship Academy. Please put it in the comments so that we can all have a look. So I can have a look, the coaches can have a look. And I promise you, we read every comment. We may not be able to reply to every comment, but we read all your comments and we want to see how you were growing and we will see you on the next video.